covered a lot of ground in a general way, but it occurs to me that there are considerable differences between a relatively younger faculty member versus one who is more prominent. Do you have any specific thoughts on this? Um, yeah, actually I've thought about this a, a good deal, Evan. Uh, once upon a time, I was a younger faculty member. That's obviously not the case right now, given the state of my forehead. Um, but the, there are differences between younger faculty members and, and uh, better known, more prominent senior faculty. However, it's really important to understand that you should not just pick an advisor based upon uh, simply their reputation. You know, for instance, you could look up the awards that various faculty members who are interested in have won, but that's really not going to work, in my opinion. Um, nonetheless, there are real differences between younger faculty who are still striving to make their independent scientific reputations and, and senior faculty who have already established themselves. Among these, for one thing, is that the senior faculty uh, have established a network of, of other colleagues at other institutions as well as a network of former students who may have already achieved uh, senior positions in, in academia or industry. These people would inevitably become part of your network and can provide uh, lots of uh, important uh, features. For instance, they would be job contacts. They can provide advice both scientifically and uh, technically. So a senior faculty member does offer those sorts of advantages. So those are a number of positive aspects of working with a senior faculty member. On the other hand, junior faculty, by that I mean someone in early in their time in the department, first, second, third year, uh, are likely going to have smaller research groups and consequently they will be less busy uh, dealing with a large group. Um, they won't be reviewing as many papers, grant proposals, uh, doing university and national committee work, uh, organizing conferences, and uh, doing consulting work. Um, by the way, consulting work is not altogether negative from the perspective of a, of a new grad student as it leads to good contacts with industry and, and possibly uh, leads on jobs in the future. Uh, generally speaking, younger faculty will have more time to work directly with you. Uh, for instance, in teaching you lab techniques um, and getting you launched in your own project and frequently have more invested in the rapid success of your work as compared to a senior faculty member. Um, so though, those are some pluses and minuses. Others are uh, more prominent faculty may be better funded or have attracted longer term funding than junior faculty in their, their very early years. So you may have a better chance of being supported on an RA. However, if the senior faculty member has a really big group and has lots of postdocs, then your shot at a research assistantship might not be better with a, with a senior faculty member. These are all things that you need to thrash out um, with anyone, any faculty member whose group you're interested in joining. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the way I view the interview with a uh, prospective graduate student is that it's a two-way street. Uh, certainly I'm interested in interviewing a graduate student and finding out 
what he's interested in or what her capabilities are. Uh, at the same time, I think that the graduate student should be interviewing me to see if I can satisfy his or her needs. Um, it's very important that you come to that meeting with uh, a list of questions that you really need to get answered. So that's, that's some of the pluses and minuses of, of looking at uh, junior versus senior faculty. Another obvious one is that a senior faculty member, due to his or her age, has had more experiences. Uh, by that I mean they've learned more from the mistakes that they inevitably have made in the past. Um, so so that, that's an issue. In addition, I want to refer back to the book I mentioned earlier, the book by Feebleman. And Feebleman candidly says that senior faculty have less incentive to compete with their graduate students. Rather, senior faculty uh, tend to take uh, pride and bask in the progress and success of their students and don't view them as competitors. Now, that, that seems like a rather long list of positive aspects of working with the senior faculty member, but I would be remiss in thinking back any number of decades now. It seems to me that younger faculty remember better how it was to be a graduate student. Um, and I think that they can be a good deal more empathetic with the problems of getting started in research um, and the worries of a grad student and or postdoc than is someone who's been in the field for 20 or 30 or 40 years, as is my case. Well, it sounds like a senior advisor might have some real advantages over a younger junior advisor. Do you agree with that? Well, I surely agree that academic prominence is an issue, but it, it must be weighted carefully, and it should not be the overwhelming factor. Um, I think that putting it the way you did is too sweeping and perhaps too great a simplification. Um, over the years, I've facetiously said to any number of students who were interviewing me uh, to see if they would work with me, that, uh, that although some people might get married more than once, they probably will only get a single PhD. So it's a very serious decision. Um, and in a sense, the choice of an advisor is a bit like marriage, uh, in that it's overwhelmingly an extremely personal decision. And its success depends upon the, the mutual compatibility and trust of the two people involved, just as it is in a successful marriage. Uh, consequently, I would not automatically give preference to a senior professor over a junior professor. There, there are lots of trade-offs and compromises that have to be made.